All right, and we're back. Uh, I'm headed back to London now, I promise. Uh, this is Juliana, and I'm meandering through the uh, ABC, Agatha Christie's ABC murders. I keep wanting to call it just the ABC murders, but, you know, that's not fair. Um, this is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. That's nice. Do we have any other questions that we can answer? I don't think so. Okay. No, we are not going. Nope, 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 nope. We're, we're gonna go find a car. And we are going to go back to London because no, we are done here. Um... Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. I'm. Oh. Right, back. I'm coming, Poirot. According to the guide, the next train departs shortly. All right. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to... Really? Really? You can't just... Oh, hey. All right. Jap has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. Mm. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Hmm. What an ass. I'm sorry. Good hunting. Like, what an ass. But Did you really? hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. Guys, notice, uh, uh... By the way, Hastings, what day is it? Well, looking at the calendar, it's the 30th. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Maybe we can get through this time. Ooh, as I hit the table. Sorry about that, everyone. Oh, oh, all, all of the, uh... Hmm. Miss Hastings, Hastings tore the envelope. I lock my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time. Oh. I lock. That's good to know, I guess. I lock. I'm going to go over here, get as many clues as possible, because, you know, I'm kind of a points hog. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I, I am an achievement type of person. I like them. I enjoy them greatly. Uh, it's kind of sad, honestly. Um, Excellency, Sussex, population. Hastings' photo album. He is very proud of his bag. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right. Nothing this way. Daily Flicker, July 30, 1935. ABC affair, no progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexhill and Endover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, 
we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Unfortunately, they have not yet helped to find him. <laughs> Daily Flicker, July the 26, 1935. The Bexhill Horror. Young maid strangled on the beach. Killer struck at midnight. Alright, let's... Oh. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, no gray cell stuff, so let's... It is not a good time. Alright, let's... Let's, uh, call Scotland Yard. Hello, Jap. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. It is not a good... T it is not a... <sighs> ah. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. Your height is things. It is an emergency. At last, Poirot, you're being reasonable. Poirot, you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. We've missed the 6.45 train, but we have plenty of time to catch the night train. Now that we have time, let's right. do this. Let us compare this new letter Aye. with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Alright, now that we've got the first certain characters in the two letters. So if we Yes, to the last this I is weird. Right. Let us compare this. Yes, the I characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects okay. to confirm my theory. And the small W, and this one, and then as well as the A. But we'll mm. be there in a minute. The W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Uh, uh, as you thought. You're, uh, Easy. Hey, there we go. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Uh, 
Actually, um, I'm gonna check something first because I haven't done it yet, so one moment. Uh, Hercules Row, White, White Horse Mansions, London, and we're gonna try and flip it over. That we can't do. Great. Okay. Uh, I've tried to flip it and turn it, and no avail. Uh, not known at White Horse Mansions and White Horse Court, try White Haven Mansions. Okay. Now we'll go to the Grey Sales. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. Yes, yes. We are hurrying. We are hurrying. We are hurrying. Ah, lack of... I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. That is a very far away from London. Alright, so I think I will examine the scene of crime and then call it good uh, for this episode. Uh, The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. All right. Um... The body is just in front of a bush. One of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. An ABC guide, the murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean season, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical shape to Rhea, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Okay, I did get everything. Good. I was afraid I hadn't. All right. A little bit more, and uh, then we will. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth.
It is pointless. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. Okay. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Mm. All right. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood of a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I just can't win, guys. I just can't win. Um... Carmichael died without seeing who struck him. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. All right, a couple more things, and then I promise I'll be done. I just want to be done with this area, and then we can go. This place is very calming. <laughs> the site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. seeing if there's anything else that we need to really look at. Um, I had better go up to Compside. Alright. So, I will leave here and um, with the meandering. I should soon be done, I hope, with this meander. Not that I'm not enjoying it. It's just... I, I've kind of played it in one playthrough, basically, for you guys, so that I'm not getting ahead of myself. Anyway, um, or forgetting important details, because I tend to stop at weird points. I try and stop it where you would at a chapter, but sometimes there's information you forget like that. Anyway, um, thumbs up if you like it. If you like what we're all doing here, please subscribe. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, feel free to leave us some comments, some ideas for new stuff. Anything you want to tell us? beyond constructive criticism, what you like, what you don't like, any of that. Anyway, I will see you next time. Uh, have a good rest of your day.